So this is another piece I'm working on today in the studio. So again, I'm working on a wood panel, but this part here is a few layers of resin. So I use art resin as my resin base and I put multiple layers of ink, plaster, pigment, mica, seed beads, you name it, it's in the background of this painting. And here I'm trying something a little different where the resin is built up so much, I'm actually creating a little bit of a shadow from the painting. So if I can show you how you can see like a little bit of a shadow and then there's the seed beads. Um, this mica is really, really cool. It's called a chameleon mica. But it really gives some neat effects. It's super unpredictable when you apply it, but overall it's pretty wild. So because this golden eagle is so small, I'm not going to be too concerned with getting all the details in there, but I still want it to feel like feathers. So I'm using my liner brush again. I always tend to have a favorite brush that I use over and over again for a while. And now you're seeing this piece like almost, you know, pretty tight, like almost done. There's still a lot that has to be done. So I'm using Van Dyke Brown by Golden and the Payne's Gray by Golden. And I'm just using the um, fluid acrylic instead of the high flow. So I prime the surface where I'm going to be painting with an acrylic primer. So it's the GAC 100 by Golden. Because the resin is so shiny, you need something that's going to bond to the resin. Otherwise, you're going to do all that work, and if you're not going to seal it, it's going to chip off in time. So here I'm giving the impression of feathers by tapping the paintbrush, and then just using my fingerprint to create the texture. So here I'm working on the pattern of the feathers. So there's a slight pattern to the interior portion of the feather. So I'm just tapping that in right now. And I'm doing that with some burnt umber. The Van Dyke Brown really is a great 
tone of a brown because it it tends to recede when it's next to say the burnt umber where the burnt umber can be like a little bit warmer the van dyke brown recedes on the surface So I'm always trying to follow the direction or the path of the animal or bird that I'm painting. So everything has a dimension. And when you're trying to create dimension in a two-dimensional space, it really is important how you apply your strokes of paint. Because that will help to build up depth immediately and you'll have less of a struggle later on trying to make it appear 3D. So you'll see sometimes I'm painting almost like with like a, a curve or a comma stroke. Other times I'm going pretty long with my stroke. It just depends on the direction of the feathers and to utilize the best possible method while I'm painting. So again, I'm trying to create that texture of the interior feathers. So this is my second layer. So I'm, I'm kind of shifting from where I put my first row of color. And I'm beginning to separate a little bit of one feather to another. So this painting will be the last painting that I do before I head for Gathering of Nations. So this will be exhibited this April at the Gathering of Nations powwow in Albuquerque. So you'll find me at the market. I'll be there from 10 to 10. So again, I'm painting rather loose, just trying to get an overall pattern that feels like the feathers.
when I work this small, I can actually do, you know, three to four paintings at the same time. I've learned to be really patient, allow the paint to dry between every layer. And by going from one painting to another, I can allow that to happen naturally without trying to rush it with a hair dryer or placing it in the sun. I really want the layers to cure. I haven't decided yet for this one if I'm going to put another layer of resin. If I don't add another layer of resin, I typically varnish them using golden varnish. So they have a satin, a matte, and a semi-gloss. So just depending on what I'm trying to achieve, I'll use one of those varnishes on top of this just to keep it stable. I've done a bunch of scratch tests with it and that varnish seems to work the best. So here I'm adding a bunch more medium to my paint because it really makes it translucent and gives me the effect of a feather just with one paint stroke. And because I'm just like pulling away, like lifting up the paint, and I have that underpainting of the white, I can really get some interesting depth right there. So that's just brush strokes creating various feathers in a very simple and quick way. I actually pull up on the brush when I go to end my stroke so that way I get a nice point. Again, I'm turning my brush in the same direction as the feathers would lay on the bird.
So now I'm taking some um, burnt umber, some of the GAC 100, and I'm gonna glaze this whole area here to warm up the feathers. And then I'm just tapping with my finger. give me a sort of texture. I can even use the side. But I'm just trying to give the impression of texture. Well, thanks for checking out my video. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Trisha George Artist. There you'll see the finished pieces that I'm working on in the studio.